Hey everybody, Osiris Frost here with a brief introduction to commodity trading in Star Citizen Alpha 3.0.1. Trade is the main addition to gameplay in patch 3.0, and with all of the new backers who came into Star Citizen with that patch, I thought I'd do a little how-to guide. Trade is mainly done in one of two ways currently, either by finding or salvaging SCUs of cargo and selling them at a trade kiosk, or by buying and selling entirely through trade kiosks. This past October, CIG released an excellent article about cargo in 3.0, which breaks down the SCU system, so rather than get into that here, I'll link the article in the show notes. Trade kiosks are computer terminals which are found in many locations throughout Star Citizen, such as Port Alisar, Levski, and Grimhex, as well as smaller outposts on the moons. Different locations specialize in the production of different resources, and also have differing levels of demand for other resources. So buying and selling the right resources according to your travel plans is sort of a game within the game, and it is something that rewards your advanced planning. In general, it's best not to buy anything from Port Alisar in the current build, but many resources can be sold there for a profit. Also, in 3.0.1, there is very little difference in the operating cost of a small ship versus a large ship, but down the road it will make more sense to start your life as a merchant off with a more modest ship like an Avenger Titan rather than taking out your Starfarer when you're flat broke. In today's video, I'll be flying my Cutlass Black, which is a great merchant ship due to its speed, stealth ability, and the size and ease of access of its cargo hold. I mentioned a minute ago salvaging cargo as a way to make money, and the ramp and side doors make getting said cargo into the Cutlass a very easy thing. I've tried to salvage cargo with an Aurora, and I don't recommend it. I've pre-planned my route today using this trade guide created by Commander Hass. There are several similar guides on Reddit and the Spectrum forums, but I like this one because I find it to be the most easily readable. If you prefer an app, there are a couple of options there as well. I'll link everything in the show notes. Today I'll be flying from Port Alisar to our Court Mining Location 157 on Yella to buy Barrel. Barrel is a great commodity to target when you're just starting out because it has a low unit price. It's available somewhere on each moon in the stand system, and you can sell it at a high margin back at Port Alisar. This will enable you to quickly make money and move into higher end commodities. As you can see, I'm having a little trouble getting to Yella as I'm continuously quantum interdicted. This is something that's still being balanced in game and I recommend just keeping your nose pointed at your destination and spam the quantum jump button. It's not really worth stopping to fight every time. So looking at this spreadsheet, you can see the approximate buy sell values for each commodity. What isn't shown here is how many units of each you can fit into one SCU of cargo. And this is an important consideration to make, because there will come a point when it simply doesn't make sense to run cargo with your Avenger anymore, because you'll totally fill it up with a relatively minor purchase. Secondly, as Star Citizen has a dynamic economy, these prices all fluctuate. So if somebody lands at Port Alisar just before you and offloads a caterpillar full of hydrogen, the buy price at Port Alisar for hydrogen is going to go way down. Currently, server populations are fairly low, so you won't see a ton of fluctuation like this, but it is something that will become more relevant down the line. For now, I suggest just taking a quick peek at the kiosk in Port Alisar before departure and comparing the current buy price to whichever guide you're using. If you don't like what you're seeing, then maybe plan a different run this time around. Also, a word of caution. It makes a lot of sense to leave some amount of your UEC in reserve in case something happens, especially when you're just starting out. This is an alpha, and sometimes the game crashes unexpectedly. If that occurs, you'll lose everything in your cargo hold, as well as the money you spent on it. There isn't any cargo insurance in the game yet, so this can be a bummer. I'm going to recommend that you spend no more than 50% of your UEC on cargo during any given run, and that way if you do crash or someone decides to blow up your ship for kicks, you're only facing a relatively minor setback. Should you ignore that advice and find yourself financially ruined, you do have a couple of options. You could refer to my video on content in Star Citizen for information on how to do missions, Run a few missions and you'll have built up a little money that you can use to get back into cargo running. And hopefully you'll make better decisions the second time around. Failing that, when 3.1 is released at the end of this month, the existing database will be archived, meaning that everyone will start from scratch again. No matter how much of a fortune you amass running cargo, these resets are going to be inevitable during the alpha process. So my final piece of advice on this topic is to pace yourself, realize that it is an alpha, and don't get discouraged when the reset takes away all your money. So what you're seeing here is rather than me flying directly at the marker for our Corp Mining Area 157, I'm flying along a vector which will keep me out of Yellow's atmosphere until I'm over my destination. If you've done any flying in Star Citizen, you've probably noticed that when you break Atmo, your speed starts to dip way down. 
This is done for you automatically by your IFCS to prevent your ship from exploding on re-entry due to friction with the atmosphere. Now, yellow has a pretty thin atmosphere as far as these things go, but it's a good habit to get into because time is money, and the more of your trade route you spend traveling at max speed, the shorter your travel time will be. That said, I still have quite a bit of travel time ahead of me before I reach my destination, so I'll cut the video here and pick back up on final approach. We are nearing our destination, so I'll go ahead and request permission to land. I don't think that you need to at these minor outposts in the current build of the game, but it's another of those good habits to develop. An unauthorized landing at a major location, like Port Olisar, will earn you a crime stat, and maybe I'll do a video on that later. But for now, I'm going to activate comms with the local port authority. You won't see a landing beacon pop up, because like I said, landing authorization here isn't a thing yet. But do take note of the green dotted circle down there on the landing pad. That's another player. And this is one of those things that makes trade a little interesting. I have no idea who this guy is or what his intentions toward me are. As we'll see when we set down, this is an armistice zone, but the bubble here is very small and he could easily decide to follow me and attack after I take back off. I'm kind of flying a little erratically here as I approach the landing pad because I'm trying to look around for this player outside of his ship so I can get a better handle on the situation. Now right there, I just saw an Ursa rover spawn and his ship despawn simultaneously, so I know that he's in the ship terminal building, which are these little blue buildings found adjacent to one of the landing pads at many similar outposts. I think we're probably good to go. My guess is that he wanted to do some drifting out on the ice flats and couldn't care less about my arrival. Yep, there he is. Anyway, let's set down and head into the local trade kiosk to buy some barrel. I'm going to speed this up a bit. Oh yeah, always close your ramp to prevent stowaways. Trust me. So here's the building with the kiosk. Head in through the airlock and it'll be right there in front of you. Activate the terminal with the inner thought system and you'll see that the buy tab up top is active by default. So on the left hand side of the screen you'll want to choose your ship from the drop down menu. It should be highlighted with the rest of your ships too far away to be relevant to this kiosk, so they'll be grayed out. Now look at the middle part of your screen. That's the meat and potatoes here. This is where you select the commodities that you want to buy. You can see them each listed with their unit price. When you find barrel, go ahead and drag the slider at the bottom right corner. Remember now, we are only spending half of our available UEC. Your total UEC available will be displayed at the top right corner of the screen. I'm going to go ahead and drag this slider to where I want it, taking note of how many SCUs worth of cargo my total purchase will amount to. Then I'll hit the buy button. Navigate through the confirmation windows to complete this transaction. Notice how your UEC total has dropped by the amount you just spent. Assuming you're done shopping, go ahead and exit the kiosk by clicking the X at the top right corner. Now, when we go back to our ship, we'll see those SCU crates already loaded into the hold. This is currently an instant and automatic process, but in the future there may be an actual loading and unloading process that you can watch if you want to. And that'll be another dimension to consider when planning your trade routes, as it'll take much longer to load, say, a hull C than a cutlass. Now we're back at Alisar. All of our cargo is still in the hold of the Cutlass, so we'll head inside of the kiosk here and sell everything we have. This process works just like the buying process, but in reverse. We need to select the Sell tab up top and choose the right ship from the drop-down on the left. If you have multiple ships, you can see the cargo status of each ship listed here as well, so we can easily identify which one we need to sell from. Then you'll want to choose our barrel from the middle of the screen, and we're selling it all, so drag that slider all the way to the right. Confirm everything and smile as you watch your bank account grow. Well, that's all for today's show. Thanks for watching. If you're new to Star Citizen, or you know someone who's thinking of playing, 
you or they can earn 5,000 UEC on your account by registering with my referral code, which you can find in the show notes down below. If you have any questions, feedback, or episode suggestions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. And if you haven't already, please be sure to like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. Thanks, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.